than what burns everything out. What do engineers do? Yeah, we put a flyback guy out there. But we don't want it to burn the device out. We short it out, waste the energy, and then call it 65% efficient. <laughs> we don't siphon off the energy and send it somewhere to conserve the energy. So what you're looking at is something you want conservation of energy. That's a better word, isn't it? See, free energy is the term where makes people's ears perk up and go, oh, he's going to talk about free energy. It's perpetual motion. No. No. One day, the moon falls. It gets tired of being up there. One day, the earth quits rotating as soon as the star burns out. There's no more solar currents. There's no more magnetic fields being developed that are hidden from your eye. So the planet quits rotating, the star burns out. Of course, by that time, you're toast. The star is twice its size. It runs out of fuel. So, of course you're saying, oh look, it's perpetual, because you only live a hundred years, if you're lucky. What do you know in a hundred years about that star? It's been here billions. But one day it does burn out. Just talk to people that look at them. And if there's any planet system around them, there's no longer anything left of it. So you will never see perpetual motion in your life. And the term free energy is not free. You have to work to get it. And then what that means is you either have a COP of one or under one. So you have to count everything in the system. I often say this to people and they go, oh, poppycock. Well, you want to know what? The machine is sitting over there blowing wind. Is that a load? Okay. The machine is pretty stable drawing the current that it's drawing. And it's going to a second battery and giving you wind. So now, can you calculate the power that it takes the wheel to keep turning and how much wind it's developing? Can you calculate that? Yes. Can you add it to the electrical output that's being dumped into the battery conserved? Yes. Can you reach a COP rating? Yes. Okay, you're saying, okay. Why don't we keep going then? Because they're two different forms of energy. But it's usable energy. The one form of energy over here is far different than the form of energy over here. Because we are transforming the energy into a different output. How far is it up, John? Maybe nature's going to make me wait. <clears throat> so it's going up. It's going up at the exact rate of these devices propor proportionately. 14.3. My mind is still gelled on that point that you mentioned earlier. When that capacitor is sitting on the end of that system before it hits the battery, I must be understanding things wrong. I asked you, if we put a capacitor to there, is it going to change 
the kind of energy that goes into that battery? That's yes. a better question. Yes. But it's still, it, it's still that screwed up. That would be a normal form of energy that's equivalent to the primary energy. And so if I threw because a Because you've transformed it into a capacitor. It's really simple. Okay? The, the energy that this is receiving right here is not the same form of energy that's being put into the machine. But if I put a capacitor there, then I'm making if it the same. If you put a capacitor here, you are transforming the energy, right? Before and goes. when the pulse comes out, you're getting it in joules. Okay, so then I would be able to hook up a generator to that and make and supplement power to the to your secondary bank. A good generator where? Say I had a solar array and I'm I've got my primary, it's creating the rotational force, I've got my secondaries that have a unique kind of energy, and so I throw a capacitor before where? I feed come up here and show me where. This is your what's receiving the charge, right? Right. So if I took a capacitor and hooked it up to where your positive side is at K. Capacitor, you take the energy, convert it, and now feed it over here. No. <laughs> no. So I put it on the negative side? No. So then like, I'm, I'm confused again. If you put a capacitor <laughs> across here, the high voltage potential will only raise up to what the capacitor can receive. Okay? So you're wasting your time. If you disconnect this from the battery, and you put the capacitor here, then you can you can take the capacitor and the energy that's being, the capacitor will transform the high voltage energy into an energy that you can dump back into the battery, which is equivalent to this battery. So my capacitor would have to go from here to here and remove that wire. Yeah. Right, but now what but do you now do I'm with now it? Got, now now, now you forgot down. about what you do with it. got to get rid of the energy somewhere. <laughs> I mean, are you going to be wearing the back of the capacitor? <laughs> it's not going to goof around with you. An electrolytic capacitor is nothing to goof around with. In the old days, they would cover you with tar. Today, they got some chemical in them that will burn your eyes out. So you must sense what this capacitor is doing and tell it to discharge at a certain time. And then you have the same form of energy going into this battery that you have coming out of this battery. You've made a transformation from one form to another and then back to another. So what's required to do that, right? Okay, there's another explanation for this, and one of those explanations is going to be on the three-pole machine that's out in the parking lot, all right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rail, run a scale model up here on the bench for you and show you exactly how to transform this energy and when you need to dump that energy. Because I'm, I'm tired of hearing people say, oh, he's not telling us everything, there's a secret over here. <laughs> um, right? I wouldn't let the machine out if there was a big secret. I wouldn't be playing with it. Right? There's no secret behind this at all. The secret's in your mind. Because you can't figure out the secret. Because there was no secret. There never was a secret about this. Ah, he's holding something back. He's got something in the coil over here. And he's not telling us about it. Yeah, poppy got. I could wind the coil in front of you and you'd still say, oh, he used a secretive set of welding rods. John doesn't have any secrets. Maybe about the women in my life, but no. <laughs> I don't have any secrets when it comes to this. It's right out in front of your face. All you have to do is look. 
All you have to do is open up the little road you're driving on and see all the trees in the forest, and then you'll figure out there was no secret. Just looked like there was. Just because I close up a box and run a machine in front of you, doesn't mean I'm not going to tell you about it. Well, I have to be paid off to tell you about it, but... <laughs> but there's no secret behind this at all. And the question that he's asking, and Chuck, your FCR stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's Yeah. That's why I don't do that. I don't, I don't do that. So, let's go into a little function before we get into the advanced machine.